um, energy of systems before and after some change or before and after some um, something that happens within our system. Okay. Energy and work are both scalar quantities. What's it mean to be a scalar quantity? What's it missing if it's just a scalar quantity? Direction. Yeah, it, it has no direction. Okay, so energy and work, both of these principles we're talking about today, have no direction. Okay, that's what it means to be a scalar. What's, what's the term called that has both magnitude and direction? A vector. Yeah, good. A vector has both magnitude and direction. has to have both of those things. So for work and energy, we no, no longer have to include a direction. Okay, a north, east, south, west, none of that stuff. Okay. So they're scalar quantities unlike things like force, acceleration, velocity. Those are all vector quantities that have to have both magnitude and direction. Okay. So work in the physics sense takes on a whole new definition. Okay. We think of ourselves doing work uh, when we're doing chores or when we're uh, basically expending energy, right? Physics work is kind of the same thing, but it's, a, it's expressed in pretty specific terms. So what work is, it's the magnitude of displacement times the force that's parallel to that displacement. Okay, and I know it seems like kind of a lot of words to describe what work is, but it's a force that's applied over a certain distance or displacement. Can anyone tell me the difference between distance and displacement? Exactly. Exactly. Displacement is how far you are exactly from where you started. Distance might be the whole path you covered during that time. I could walk to the, to the end of the classroom and back, and I would have covered no displacement, right? My displacement would be zero because I ended up in the same spot where I started. If I walk there and back and I count the distance, it would be exactly how many meters I went there and back, okay? So displacement is exactly how far you ended up from where you started. It's important to see that the, the force that we're looking at here is the force that's going to be parallel to that displacement. And I'm going to show you a picture of that here in a second. So hopefully we can understand that a little bit better. Okay. F parallel or force parallel is the component of the constant force. We're going to deal with constant forces. Um, not that we've dealt with anything different than that so far, but is the component that's parallel to the displacement. So here is this box that's being pulled upward with some force at an angle. Okay, but we can't deal with this force and this displacement because they're not running a parallel to each other. We have to have the force and the distance that we're looking at be parallel to each other. So what we do is we solve for the parallel component, basically, of that force. Whatever force is going to be parallel to the displacement. And it always works with this equation right here. Force times displacement times cosine of theta. So if our force is exerted at some angle, we can plug that in as our theta. Okay, work equals force times distance times cosine theta. That's always going to give us the parallel force, which is what we want uh, when we're looking at the amount of work that's done. Okay, we want our force to be going in the same component system, vertical or horizontal, as our displacement is. Okay. Um, in this case, displacement's going E, so we only use F. Okay, that's basically what I just said. Okay. Instead of using the angular force or this force that's being pulled at an angle, we break it down into the parallel component. Do we care about this vertical component of our force? <clears throat> Why not? Why don't we care about that? Yeah, the, the box isn't moving upward at all. Its displacement is only taking place in the horizontal direction, which means we only care about the horizontal component of that force. Wait, so you're pretty much just breaking it down. Like mm -hmm. But really, you don't, you don't even really need to take the time to break it down individually. You can just plug it into this equation. You can, it will work out the same, but you don't really have to, okay? So let's see, if I push a grocery cart a distance of 50 meters by exerting a horizontal force of 30 newtons on the cart, how much work would I be doing? Or how much work would be done on the cart? Let's go ahead and try and solve this one. So D stands for? Displacement or distance. Yep. Mm -hmm. How far from where we started? Okay, my 30 newton force is being applied to my cart. And it's going to travel a total of 50 meters. Okay. My displacement, is it vertical or horizontal? Horizontal. horizontal. Okay. And my force, is it vertical or horizontal? 
horizontal. So if my force continues to go like this, 30 newtons, are these two lines parallel to each other? Yes. So that means I just need to go ahead and plug in work equals force times distance. Okay, if those two objects are already parallel to each other, there's no need for us to plug in cosine theta. If you were going to plug in an angle, there, there, there is no angle between these, so it would be cosine of zero. Plug into your calculator, what's cosine of zero? Zero. One. One, right? So you're just taking this whole thing by one if it's cosine of zero. So that's why we can just drop it. Okay, so if it's already parallel, there's no need for us to put that cosine of theta in. So we're going to find work equals 30 newtons times 50 meters, which is equal to yep, 1,500 newton meters. Okay, 1,500 newton meters. And we're going to learn a new unit for that in just a couple slides, but right, for right now it's just our unit as newton meters. Can we think of one other thing that has the unit newton meters? <clears throat> torque, good, torque, because we take FR times sine of theta, right? Force times radius, very good. Okay, here's how we solve that. We took FG cos theta, okay, we already did that. So unit for work is what we call a joule, okay, or joules. Joules is indicated by a capital J, okay? Work is just a capital W, joule is a capital J. So one joule is equal to one newton meter. So I want you to think about um, each of these questions. I'm going to put up two questions. I want you to think about them and discuss them with your partner, and we'll come back and talk about them in a second. So can a force be exerted on an object, yet no work be done? And I want you to think about what work is done on an object that's carried as you walk at constant velocity. Okay, so think about these two questions. Discuss them with people around you. Try and get an idea about what you think uh, the answers might be, and we'll talk about them here in just a couple seconds. We have two kind of stipulations we have to think about when we're dealing with work. We have to specify whether work is being done by an object or work is being done on an object. Okay. In that last example, I was doing work on the binder. Actually, I wasn't. But if I was lifting that binder, I would be doing work on the binder or we could be looking at the work done by me. Okay. We could look at the work done on it or by someone. This is not something you have to specify with um, more subscripts or anything like that. It's just something for you to kind of be aware of. It's not something that's going to need a whole new label or anything like that. It's just something that you have to be kind of paying attention of as you work through these problems. Okay. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, we're also going to look at work done by specific forces and work done by the overall net force. So you have to kind of specify on these ones. If it's work done by an applied force, if it's work done by a frictional force or a gravitational force or any of that kind of stuff. Okay, so this one you'll have to be a little bit more specific. There's also network, which is of the whole system. Okay, so that first problem we did with the grocery cart could be work um, applied because we had an applied force of 30 newtons or it could have been work net since that was our only force, which makes it the net force time to write it down just kind of listen as I explain it here for a second we have a crate that's going to move this certain distance to its final location okay so this right here this arrow is going to be our displacement vector um, here's our force that's being applied at an angle of 37 degrees here's our frictional force what would these two forces be gravitational force and what would this one normal force good okay so go ahead and start getting this written down I'm just going to label the um, diagram a little bit more here Nope, we always want them in kilograms. Mm -hmm. Okay, we want to find out the work done on the crate. So this means we want to find the net work or the overall work that's done on this system. We have a couple different forces that we have to take into account here. Okay, first and foremost is our displacement in the horizontal direction or the vertical direction? horizontal okay our displacement is horizontal which means we care about which of the forces on our free body diagram 
The horizontal ones or the vertical ones? Horizontal. horizontal ones. So that means we really don't even care about the normal force or the gravitational force. Okay, we, we don't really care what, what's happening with those because we're not lifting the box. It's not going up at all. That means we also don't really care about the vertical component of our angle force. Okay, all we care about is the horizontal. So let's go ahead and look first at work that's done by our applied force. Okay, this is our applied force right here, 100 newtons with it at an angle of 37 degrees. Okay, so we're going to find the work done by applied forces first. Okay, and we're going to use our equation force times displacement cosine theta. Okay, and I just put the little applied um, subscript in there so we know we're only looking at this force right here. Okay, are we clear on that part? Okay, so we're going to find the work that's done by our applied force by taking 100 times 40 meters times cosine of what? 37. Good, cosine of 37. Three thousand one hundred ninety-four point five, and what's our units for work? Joules. Joules, good. Capital J. Joules. Okay, so there's our work done by applied force. What do we do about our frictional force now? We're going to find our work done by our frictional force because it's going in the opposite direction. It's trying to oppose. Okay, so friction, believe it or not, does work on objects. Okay, it exerts a force over a certain amount of distance. As you continue to slide that box, it's constantly trying to slow it down. Okay, so our work done by friction is going to be our frictional force times displacement times cosine of theta. Okay, so our frictional force is equal to 50 newtons. Our distance is 40 meters. What's our cosine of theta here for our frictional force? Yeah, our cosine, of, it would be cosine of zero, which we know is one. Remember, if the force is already parallel to the displacement, which in this case it is, we can just drop that cosine theta. We don't even need to put it on there, okay? But if you want to plug it in, it would be cosine of zero, okay? So that gives us, what, 2,000 yeah. joules. And since it's our frictional force, is it positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Okay, so then all we're going to do is combine these two sources of work. This is positive work because it's going in the positive direction. This is negative work because it's going in the negative direction. So if we want to find overall net work here, we're just going to take 3,194.5 minus our 2,000 joules of work from friction. And we'll say that our net work is equal to 1,194.5 joules. All right, what questions do we have? There's two different ways you can go about solving for this one, and I'm just going to kind of walk you through quickly how to solve the other way if it makes more sense to you. Um, the other way you can do it when we're solving for a net work of our system is to find the net force and then take it times the displacement. Okay, so if we're trying to find net... Yeah, Sam, sorry. Okay, so if we want to find the net force and solve for work that way, if we find the parallel component of this, how do we find the parallel component or this side of the triangle? Yeah, I take 100 times cosine of 37, right? So everyone just do this in your calculator. You don't have to write it down necessarily. Take 100 times cosine of 37. Make sure your calculator is in degrees. All right. We got about 79.9. So that's our parallel component of that force, right? Does that make sense? That's our just horizontal component of this force right here. We clear? Okay. We're ju I'm just showing you an alternate way we can solve for it. Okay, so that's by finding the net force rather than the network. Okay, so here we have our horizontal force. We're going to subtract out the frictional force to find our net force here. So take that 79.9 minus 50. That's subtracting out the net or subtracting out the frictional force. Okay, so what do we get? 29.9 is our net force. If you take force times displacement, so if you take that answer times 40 meters, we get 1,194.5, okay, which is our exact same work value that we got. Um, you can solve it either way.
Okay, you can solve each of the work components separately, or you can solve for net force and then solve for work. Does that make sense?